welcome everybody to the Bunch of Goofs podcast. Here's our host, Asian Faja Gamer, and his co-hosts, Odasia and Hey I'm Chef. And together they are the Bunch of Goofs. Well, hey there, everybody. I just wanted to remind y'all that Bunch of Goofs is recorded in front of a live audience during a live cast on Twitch. Oh, shit. You know what I forgot? I forgot crack. something very, very important. Not crack! Not always crack, dude. I didn't say... Who said crack? Uh, Chef. No, oh, I didn't hear that on my end. I heard it on my end. All righty then, everybody. Welcome, welcome. The Bunch of Goofs are live again. Thank you all so much for joining me. I am Asian Fasha Gamer. We've got Oda back and finally back, thankfully. And Chef went somewhere. Either way, today's subject is mech suits and exosuits. The good, the bad, and the dumb. Of course, we're not going to stick with just video games because historically we haven't been able to fucking do that. So we're going to go from all across media. The problem is, is that a lot of the times... Most video games do a better job of stuff than movies do. Movies I'll drag something across your media. Oh my. Wrong streaming <laughs> service. All the okay, oh, wait, but so there is so there is something that we have to do because we did start this particular podcast. Are you ready, Chef? Take to take contact. <laughs> it's it's tradition <laughs> now at this point. I grabbed uh, the you know what? I've actually seen back. mechs where that actually applies. Oh, I have too. Yeah. Again, I grabbed the wrong cord. I'll be right back. The fact that there is instances where that applies is not only hilarious, but also kind of sad. Why would you put gender on a mech suit? Because you want to put a skirt on it rather than a cod piece. Oh, no, 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 no. They didn't do anything with the skirt. It was just two big boobs. Why? Why did it, Ian it, Malcolm it want? To, why did Ian Malcolm want to put skirts on all the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park? <laughs> God damn it, this dude! Was insane. <laughs> all righty then. So I do want to also obviously talk to uh, chat. See. Jaden's here, and we are doing pretty fucking awesome. Appreciate you being here. They do ask, what would you say is your go-to power armor if you had one? Power armor or exosuit, you know, mech suit. Hmm. Um, I would actually go with the Space Marine from StarCraft for the most simplistic reason ever. You don't need to be genetically modified or have implants put into you in order to pilot it. Yeah, I, it's just I mean, bolted I, to your body because you can't get out of it. No, though, no, that was only one per. That was actually special. Wasn't that his? Was nice? specially the one? Yeah, you that saw was for the him. Cinematic for. Yeah, most of them you can actually get out of very easily by yourself. You're talking about StarCraft, not 40K. Never mind. I hear Space Marines and think fucking 40k. Oh, no, no, no. Definitely not talking about 40k. Because nobody wants to be a 40k oh, okay. Marine. <laughs> Ew. Those are bad. Yeah. Like, I, I wouldn't even want to be a Halo Spartan. The first I would. I would. That much genetic engineering where there was a 60% death rate? Sir, I am 5'6 and fucking fat. If you put me, give me any sort of genetic anything to make me fucking taller and ripped enough to carry a, what, 4,000 pound fucking suit? Sure. And, a and if I'm in that 60%, and if I'm in that 60% of death rate that, you know, fucking happens with those things, guess what? My problems are no longer my problems. That is true. <laughs> it's like Stalin said, <laughs> when there is no man, there is no problem. <laughs> But I can find this. I can find the silver lining in that shit. I will say, when it came to the Spartans, yes, Spartan one twos, no, maybe threes, 
Maybe fours? I mean, I would love to have Spartan 5 armor, but I would love to have Chief's Spartan 5 armor, which was barely barely uh, disconcertable from fucking Spartan 1. Wasn't his a prototype? No. No, okay. He was... No, he, he was... I think he he wasn't even the first successful Spartan 1. Mm -mm. I know that. Yeah, that was a few before him, right? Yeah. He, he was actually one of the last Spartan ones, if I remember right. Yeah. Didn't they have, like, a platoon that got fucking wiped out? Yeah, it, uh, when they, in, when the first battle after the Forward Unto Dawn series, mm. movie, whatever the fuck it was, the next time they encountered the Covenant, it was a full pl uh, platoon of fucking Spartan ones, <laughs> and, yeah. That didn't go too the well. Covenant are the Covenant are assholes. <laughs> This we know. This we know. Uh, uh, do we want to uh, see? What is y'all's favorite power armor? Uh, not power armor. Uh, mech suit. Hmm. Epion. I'm a big fan of uh, Nightingale. I actually like the... Uh... The mo the mobile suits the or the whatever the, I can't remember what they call but they are uh, Knights of Sidonia. Oh 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 the ones from um Knights of Sidonia is the name of the show. Uh, yeah. it's also a really good song. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I don't know why, well, but for some reason I was few... thinking about um fuck what was the anime with Lelouch. Lelouch, oh, uh, Gios, yeah, Gios. I was yeah, thinking about Gios. those mechs for a second there when you mentioned them. Sorry. Well, Wrong ones, obviously. Well, I like the fact that they actually kind of like did a little bit of actual like physics thought, science to it. Like they got somebody who understood physics when they wrote the story to this. Because they like one of the biggest and massive things that happened in that show is they did a full speed 10 degree turn with the spaceship. And it killed... 30% of the population because of the G-forces they pulled. The gangster forces? The g um, <laughs> They also, like, at the end, they literally had, like, interlocking ships together, where they all had big guns aiming down, and basically it was, like, 200 mech suits in synchronized orbit, killing everything trying to kill the hero. Yeah. And that was just an awesome scene because the story-wise, you didn't know they were coming until his sword broke. One of the monsters were coming at him and suddenly got pierced in the top of its head. And then all of a sudden it started raining bullets as all of, the, uh, all of his allies started showing up. Oh, God. Inter I'll interlock your spaceship with some dangly bits hanging down that you shoot stuff at everybody coming towards you and fucking... <laughs> oh, we're going right back to taint to taint contact. Break a sword. <laughs> Go through the top of your head. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Hi, Oda, welcome back. <laughs> One of my favorite scenes of all time. And you and turned I it into a porno. Yes, I did. That's what he does. <laughs> you can find the full description over on AsianDaddyGamer.com. God damn it. Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus. Oh. oh, you son of a... <laughs> This is what happens the two days after a heat exhaustion con. Uh, <laughs> yeah, your brain is a little goofy. All right. A little bit. <laughs> it's mush. I mean, granted, it's a little bit more mush than it usually is, let's be honest. <laughs> so in regards to something that Oda did talk, just bring up, you know, transforming scenes. What is your favorite transforming mech, not including Epion? But... But we know Epion transforms. transforms. We know. Fine, Togies. Fuck you. 
<laughs> you want you or, ready for the ultimate cheating one? I I, I had it done. Headmasters. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which one? I was out. Transformers Headmasters. Ah, okay. I was also gonna say Megazord. <laughs> I mean, it counts. Yeah. It really does. It is a Voltron. giant mech. Voltron. <laughs> so, I know what Voltron is, obviously. But for so thank you, fucking Sean William Scott and Ashton Kutcher. Every time I hear the word Voltron, I can only think of Zoltan. <laughs> God damn it. Why? I don't know why. It's just the way my brain works, okay? We all know it's fucking weird up there. Yes, yes we do. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. I mean, I mean, while, while, okay, before, or before we get to mine, mine obviously was either Tall Geese or the fucking, because I can't choose Epion. Tall Geese or the, uh, the Megazord. What about your Zoda? <laughs> because we already knew you were going to choose Epion. What's yours, Faja? Mine? Let's see. When it comes to transforming mech, does Bumblebee. Me no, does Tuna. Me does 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 Megas count? The head pops off and it becomes a car. <laughs> Gurren Lagann. <laughs> Actually, that is my favorite one. I will say Gurren Lagann is my favorite just because of one. It brought back the aspect of ridiculous giant battles with no reservations. And it I was love essentially that. An, it was more of a stupid anime version of Gundam, but it was still fucking fantastic. Mm -hmm. And wow. what's up, Absolute Zero? Happy Monday to you as well. Our subject today is mech suits and exosuits. The good, the bad, and the dumb. Currently, we're talking about transforming exosuits, and we're going to hear Oda's favorite transforming uh, exosuit or mech suit. I can't remember the name of it. Dang it! I keep going. Um, it's what the original Jetfire was based on. Like the toy line that Jetfire was on was actually made into an anime. That's why he only showed up in two episodes. My brain is not thinking about it. No, but I, can't I cannot, it it, it's been many years. And the other one I liked, I, I don't, they don't technically transform that much, but they do. It's kind of weird. Uh, Eureka 7. Mm. I haven't thought about that one in a while. Like, I, I know they basically transform from fighting mode to I want to go surfing mode. It's still transforming, though. It counts. I call, I think it counts. Although, oh, I just thought of another one that is from a really old anime. Hmm. Escaflone. Hold on a second. Oh! The scene of getting into that exosuit, the animation was fucking tits. Um, that was so long ago, but I just remember it was awesome. And the suit itself, one of the reasons why I love the suit from Escaphonia is because it transformed into a dragon. Oh my god, why am I not surprised? <laughs> Let's see, the Nervash transform and so do a few others. Macross, ah! Mac oh man, Macross, I haven't thought Macross, about Macross. Macross, that's Jetfire, I think, I think that's the Jetfire one. Is that the one that you were thinking about? I think. Because, yeah, Macross was a lot of mechs that transformed into, you know, like, jet planes and shit. Yes, that's where Jetfire came from. Okay. So I think that's the one that you were talking about, uh, Oda. Yep. Yeah, I, I knew about it. And they were awesome because they would do, like, partial trip. Oh, here's another one. It's not a mech suit, but it has arms, which is weird. Uh, Outlaw Star. Outlaw Star. Cowboy Bebop? No, out the show, it was called Outlaw Star, and for some reason, the ship had arms with revolvers. Oh my fucking god. 
I forgot about that. I don't know if that counts as a mech suit, but it's still awesome. I want to count it as a mech because it, it had arms. Though, I, I guess we have to ask the question. Does that make it a mech or a ship? It has arms. It's got articulating arms. And it can shoot a fucking gun. I don't think it's a ship because it's not humanoid. Okay. Like, <laughs> they may know. <laughs> it's just really funny that I'll okay, these arms with a freaking revolver. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> it's, it, it's par for the course when it comes to anime. They give us all the most ridiculous fucking things. So, speaking of giant mech suits... I'll show you a giant and... mech suit. It's in the bathroom. Never mind. I'm not <laughs> gonna go there. I don't want to be one of your TikTok trolls. Um, but... <laughs> um, do... What is your guys' favorite Megazord? Or, or Dino's order, et cetera, et cetera. I know what mine is. It's either going to be the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Megazord, or the one when they um, upgraded and got the Red Dragon one and the... Fuck, I forgot what it was called. Thunder Megazord. Yeah, that one. Um, mine is the Mystic Force one. And Faja's gonna be mad he didn't mention this one. Eh. It turns into a dra it's uh it has two configurations. One is a four person dra one is a four of them combined into a dragon and the Red Rangers Zord rides the dragon like a mounted knight. And the other one, all five combined in a different configuration, forming the Megazord. Oh shit, I didn't know about that. I mean, my 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 favorite Megazord. I mean, Ugh. or Zord, whatever. Individually, it will always be the Dragonzoid from Mighty Morphin. Yeah, the Dragonzoid's just the bomb. Well, yes. you know, but may, that's not uh, a Megazord. May Tommy rest in peace. That poor, yeah, man. Mental health, please help. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, my favorite Megazord from all of them is still gonna be OG. Hmm. There's also the, the Phoenix the very... Unizor. The Phoenix. Is that the one that came from the movie? No, that's from Mystic Force. Okay. Yeah, that's... There was the... a horse. Those two different horses. Catastros, and then the one they pulled out of their du Dusex Machina butt. <laughs> that both could fuse with the Red Rangers thing. And basically form a Phoenix Megazord. Or with the other character, it just made him Korag Megazord. And huh. when the Red Ranger did it, he basically the, the mane and tail of the horse came out of the back of his head for the Zord. And he lit it on fire and literally did a bunch of uh, heavy metal de uh, head shakes to launch his, his ponytail, the flaming ponytail, to kill the bad guy. But he became you know the horse's ass. The an, another Megazord that was there, well, all of them, truthfully, that were very short lived. Like they were literally one season long after the movie with Ivan Ooze came out. Fucking the like ninja ones that were like the loose fitting clothing, and they were the actual animals, like the fucking Gorilla Zord and all that fun shit. Mm -hmm. You fucking when those combined, they were actually pretty cool. I wish they would have done more than just one season with those fucking things. I think that had uh, to do with started... the fact that Saiban ended that particular season. Oh, uh, I know it did. I'm just saying I wish they would have done. That. Oh yeah. Yeah, they um So, on yeah. the same on, on the same line, line of thought or train of thought, uh your the your least favorite Megazord. <laughs> Cuz I got mine. <laughs> Jesus Christ, do I have mine? The police Megazord. Huh? The police Megazord. When they were in space? Space police. Yeah. Space for That's not Delta. mine. I don't. I just. I didn't like the, the 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 design of the SPD Zord. It just didn't look fun. Okay. 
I got one that's I got that. by, but it's more to do with storytelling and just crappy way of doing it. I don't know if either of you saw the final season of Power Rangers. I watched it for funsies, and they just literally said, Hi, these Zords appeared. And, like, every ranger under the sun piloted these things. Like, that mm. season was literally, give, a, give somebody with ADHD a line of something white, and then have him write a script. And no context whatsoever for it. Yeah, it was just all kinds of, what is wrong with you? I've got one that's even worse than that. What? You want to talk about the most boring season of fucking Power Rangers there was. Let's get in our cars and drive. Power Rangers Fast and the Furious. A.K.A. fucking, what was it, Turbo Force? The oh, one that Turbo. Yeah, Power Rangers Turbo. Thank oh. you. Fucking, they were cars. They were fucking you know cars. They, you know they actually did that and did it well later on? I don't give a damn if they did it well when they <laughs> did it late, later on. Fucking Turbo sucked ass. It was literally just... <laughs> all we were missing was a bald, ripped dude saying family every 30 seconds. The only difference is, is that came out about 10 years before. I know it did. Yeah. I know it you did. had... I was still I was still a fucking kid when that came out. Oh yeah, no, and they also I, I absolute zero <laughs> brings up one of the things that I absolutely fucking hated, which is they just had a little kid that morphed into an adult and fought with them. What the fuck? You know in Super Sentai that was actually the White Ranger? That that Tommy's White Ranger, the reason why he acted so weird, morphed, is because it was actually in Japan, he was a child. What the fuck? Notice me, so Super Sentai. New. <laughs> oh my god! Never mind. Yeah, I no. have enough. I have a, I have an idea that you need so, to do. You want to know one thing that actually makes that completely? You know one thing that that actually makes completely stupid from before in the mm -hmm. storyline. Children can't use power coins. That's why we had to bring in the alien rangers. Yeah, which is funny and then because you have the, a child the, the, be the Blue Ranger and in the last the last season of the fucking Mighty Morphin, they did the fucking young kids, not the teenagers. That's what I'm talking about. They said to go yeah. get the Alien Rangers because they couldn't morph. But it's like, but then like two seasons later, you gave a kid a morpher and it turned him into an adult. You know why they did the young kids thing, right? Do you remember what happened? No, there was a. Re you remember what happened, like a season or a few, ep a, like I want to say, like a few months before they aired that episode. Didn't they fire everybody? Not only that, but they had a sweepstakes going on. Oh yeah, that's fucking right. Those I were the winners. <laughs> Those kids were the fucking winners. Oh god, that would explain a few things. Yeah, I, I tried entering that. Yep, me too. I uh, nope, I did I didn't fit the age criteria. Just because you're old, we know. No, kick your kick your little ass. I'll put you in a hot room with a, with a, with no AC for a week. I just fucking did that. I said for a week. I do that every day, sir. Remember, heat exhaustion <laughs> is a problem. Drink your water. Listen here, Captain Planet. No, he's Captain Hydrate. Everybody hydrate spam. Mm -hmm. I have over 100,000 points. Are you sure you want me to no, do that? No, don't. <laughs> fucking watch Faja get fucking water poisoning on stream. One per, one per person. But I want to see how many people we can do this with. <clears throat> I'm almost out of water. One per, one per account? <laughs> one per person. Oh, you guys, you guys suck. No, I swallow. Giggity. Oh, so you do love him. So, I have an idea for a channel point redemption. One second, I gotta chug you, this. Chug, 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 chug. Pansy ass. Uh, uh. So, you need to do a notice me super senpai and i will find a way to do the graphic 
so that way you push a button to change the scene on your stream and it's a fucking morpher fucking thing but like <laughs> like the little you know oh it's morphing time and it shows like the outline of the shit in the their picture inside i will fucking set it up so that way it pops on the screen and frames frames your entire fucking face and you just say some stupid bullshit if we can figure that out oh, i know how to do it i will I do, do it. it i will fucking do it i will be that goofball i just need i, I, I can i can do a static one i can't do with all the electrical yeah bullshit but more. that'll also um it, it'll push me to talk to remy to finish my button box that i've been putting off <laughs> for fucking it's okay i've got I've got a 15 fucking key stream deck right here that I fucking haven't used in two years. Which is why you need to get back to streaming, dickbag. Fuck your couch. No. How about that? <laughs> Go back to streaming. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, I forgot. Fuck Remy's couch because, you know, that's your couch right now. <laughs> Ew, that was low. <laughs> You no, it's not. Bitch. No, no, it's not. Oh. It's going up because I'm shorter than him. Okay, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're, you're an you inch feel... you're an inch shorter than me. First off, I'm five seven. You're five six. And How now am you're blurry. I the tallest person. How am I the tallest person? Because you're uh, average because white my... man height. Because my mom, my mom, or my dad's five nine, my mom's four eleven. It's not my fault he fucked a midget. I'm guessing you're what five nine, five six, or five eight. I'm I'm five nine, and what's really funny is my wife is taller than all of us. <laughs> well, Kana, you there you go. Point in time, you're like, didn't you say at one point in time you're the shortest person in your family or something? Or was it the tallest? I can't remember. Who me? No, Fa Oda. Oh. No, um. No, what I said was is that my brother hit puberty early. I hit puberty late. Right, that's So that's right. he was twice my size for about four years. Which was not fun. <laughs> it's funny, my brother has a... So my mom has four kids with three people. Uh, yeah. Um, and my brother's dad is a lot taller than my dad. But he and I ended up being roughly the same height. It depends well, upon if he gives himself. From. It, it depends upon if he gives himself his little floof. Mm. Oh, I'm taller. No, powder. your hair is taller than me, fucker. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Now, in an attempt to get back to our subject. Where's the fun in that? Shut up. We need our tangents, but not the cosines. <laughs> oh, God. 42. 42. Let's see. The, oh, God. The exosuit I want. So, Absolute Zero here says the exosuit I want is the exosuit from G1 Transformers. You mean the one that the humans wore to fight with the Transformers? That kind of yeah, looked like it was that... made in a junkyard? I was actually thinking the one that literally looked like somebody decided to use X-ray vision on Bumblebee. It was like oh just my. frame and clear plastic with a human in it. And it transforms. Uh, talking... Oh wait, it transforms. I don't think I. I don't think I know this one then. Yeah, yeah. It was from the. It was from. They actually had it where. The humans were able to. It had a bumblebee-like uh, vehicle mode, and then it transformed into a combat mode for them to use. Okay. So I got a fun one for you two. Okay. Taking taking Gundams out of the picture. All right. Because we all know my favorite mech, pilotable mech, is Epion. Taking Gundams out of the picture, what would be your favorite pilotable? mech that you could that you could if you could pilot it you would gypsy danger or cherno alpha gypsy danger is one of mine it's one of mine it's not my it's not my top pick though let's see absolute well, zero uh, says well, the nervosh uh, well, what is the nervosh i don't think i know that one i think i might have to look this well, one up well, 
I was gonna say, Oda, do you have yours, or are you still going through the Rolodex? Oh my god, that's like asking me to... Like, one, I, I've seen so many trying to remember the names is hard, but also just picking my favorites is also not fair. I mean, I'll, 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 I'll do my top pick if you can't figure out yours yet. Go ahead. A series that we haven't even fucking talked about yet. Fucking give me a Liger, dude. Son of a bitch. I cannot believe we forgot, com completely forgot about Zoids. <laughs> give, give, me, give me any iteration of the Liger aside from, what was it, Sword Liger or whatever? The one that's like super skinny and barely has any armor, but it's fast as shit. I gotta go look up the name of it. I mean, of your pick or the, the Liger I'm talking about? Of what I of my favorite. Okay. Yeah, I forgot. Damn it, I can't believe I forgot about Zoids. Because if I think about Zoids, it's got to be the Geno Breaker. I mean, the Geno Breaker is good, but I, I'm I'm a simp for the main the main character, and not the main character, the main Zoid in that fucking series, and it, it's always the Liger. Yeah. Liger Zero, Shield Liger, Blade Liger, fucking, you know. The Ligers that the Liger in that series is equivalent to fucking Goku. Whereas the Liger like, oh, in... it got it, it got its ass kicked and it comes back even stronger. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, I, I, you gotta forgive me trying to pronounce this. Ready? Mm hmm The Zybazen. It's from Xeno Gears, the really big one that just happened to be like the pilot's grandfather or father. God, it's been so long since I've looked up anything for Xeno Gear. I don't I had to remember. Look that one up. Don't remember. It's the one with the giant. It was just the one that was physically just a giant, big honking piece of metal. It was. It was like three times the size of all everybody else's. I'm guessing you. It, it, oh, it was the biggest one that you saw in the game, right? Was it a boss that you? The fought? Biggest one. No, it was no of the playable ones. The little girl from the floating city had it. God, I think it was a boss and she kicked your butt. It's been so long. I don't remember. Yeah. But okay, good choice. I I've got a uh I've got an old school like like if we're talking like mechs and power and all that fun shit. Um fucking for the bad. And it was a boss, if you technically want to count it. Oh, what is that? Andros. Hmm. I don't know. Andros was more like a fucked up Digimon. No, he wasn't. He was a giant fucking robot face. He was an AI two, that in, took over the face. Two floating hands. No, 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 no. What, what are we talking it, about? Star Fox 64. The end game boss. I never got to the end. Oh, so you know Andros, the big, the the big bad of of Star Fox, the one who killed his dad Diggly. and all that function. Yeah. When you get to the very end, Andros is a giant floating face with two hands. And when you eventually damage him enough, you blow the skin off of his hand. You blow the skin off of his hand, or no, you destroy his hands, and then you blow the skin off of his face, and it's just like one of those fucking like. Uh, if you were to take the skin off of one of those monkeys that has the symbols, it goes ting, 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 ting. That fucking face oh is basically all Andros is. <laughs> Which Andros was a person. Okay. Andros was a person. He, he was controlling that fucking thing. That freaky Hence ass the reason thing. He is. Yeah. I have a favorite suit, but you banned Gundam, but it's not Gundam Wing. Well, no, I banned Gundam because... I mean, we've already talked about Epion and yeah. Tall Geese and Dude, all that shit. There's, I'm talking about a completely different series. Well, I know. Just, wing, wing, wing's just my favorite. Fine. What? Who's your favorite Gundam, sir? Burning Gundam. Are you sure it's not Unicorn Gundam? No, I like the fact that literally two lovebirds stood on this thing's hands and literally heart <clears throat> power killed the big bad evil guy. With the power of they love! Had... It was the they heart of... Heart... 
They did a heart shaped Kamehameha wave. Oh god, they Care Bear stared it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but it was like like it's like why did they die? They just put a hole into space. Plot armor. Oh, that, that is the one thing I like. So Gundam series, I love the fucking Gundams, right? Like there's very few bad main character Gundams in the Gundam series. They're all badass in some sort of way. Mm. But, but, fucking plot armor out the ass. Oh, yeah. You're talking about mobile suits are somehow able to fly into space using nothing but their shield and survive re-entry, land, and start fighting. Well, fuck. Master Chief survived fucking re-entry. <laughs> um. The amount of force Blood armor. increases rather much. The amount of force credit increases with mass. This is true, but it's still a person in fucking armor, not a person in a fucking mech suit. And ultimately, Although, the number one thing to did... consider is it's fiction. Yeah, there's yeah. that. But in, in uh, my mind, the comparison is like fucking a space shuttle coming in versus fucking the dude who jumped out of the damn uh, hot air balloon in the stratosphere for Red Bull a couple of years ago, and his shoot's not fucking opening. Did, did, no, I'm good. Either, I don't want to do it that. Would fucking suck. Either way, it would fucking suck. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, though, Master Chief didn't do that on like that wasn't Master Chief's like he wasn't designed to do that. He just had enough plot armor to survive it. Oh the yeah, Gundams the... were designed to be freaking hail freaking a uh, hell diver dropped onto these dang things. Gigantic okay. robotic suits meant to be dropped from orbit onto fucking planetary, and uh, no external like. I like it when they give them like drop pod things where they land and then the sides blow out and there's the like G Gundam did like G yeah. Gundam that's how they did it, but the original Gundam he just put a shield down and just flew straight down. Yep. No, no, that's not how this works. That's not I mean, fuck, at, at least with Wing they transformed into like aerodynamic ships and shit. Well, you know, he was a new type. It was Amuro Ray, the plot armor. <laughs> Oh, it's it's literally, yeah, it was just, he's he's the new type, so he has to survive. Even though the original Gundam had no fucking planetary shielding. No, he didn't. Oh, here's the better one. Uh, G Gundam. If you could, you, oh, here's a thought that's gonna make both of you go, oh shit. Put Goku in the burning Gundam. He would break the burning Gundam. You know that, right? No. You know the no. You know how those Gundams like could use all of the abilities of the fighters. Kamehameha from a Gundam. But the difference would I mean, be the the guys that were you know piloting those guns. They didn't have superhuman strength. You yes, put someone with no, they didn't. They were human. They didn't. Go I didn't think no. I didn't think it was super. I didn't no, think they it was were anime human. Human. Yeah, but they didn't say, have were... superhuman strength. They didn't have Saiyan level okay. strength or anything like that. And oh, those suits Saiyan were level. probably not meant to handle that kind of pressure. Okay, just somebody trained like Goku, not Go Yamcha. We'll put Yamcha. Oh come on, there. go at least with the strongest human, and that's fucking Krillin. Krillin yeah. <laughs> no, because Krillin would actually Krillin would break it. <laughs> Also, I don't know if they come with step stools. <laughs> oh, come on. They, like the Dragon Gundam had a short dude piloting it. That's not fair. First off, uh, I, no. I want to see, see a Gundam Krillin owned counter. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the reason why I said that is the one boxing Gundam, the oh, guy God. actually had the, like, the punch move the Gundam used. He did that himself like he was practicing with those energy blasts coming out of his boxing gloves anime and then he got into his Gundam and it did the exact same move with the punching as he did so it was able to like use and amplify his martial arts right but that you know 
I don't think it would equate. Completely different universe, so there's a lot of things that I have to consider. I know, but it would just be funny to see a Kamehameha come out of a Gundam. We saw a heart Kamehameha from that. That was a little bit different, but yeah. And yes, yes, he did bag Android 18. Krillin, Krillin got some serious fucking game. Yeah, and you know what? It's like, and you know what he did with 18? They have a kid. Two, I think they, did they have two kids or just one? Was it just a daughter? Just one. Okay. I thought it was two. You? I don't fucking so remember. I, 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 stopped, I stopped watching after the Cell series. Mm. In Super, he only had one kid because it was a baby. Right. Okay. Again, I, I stopped. I stopped watching after Cell. So, my, I got. Yeah. I got. I got bored of Dragon Ball Z when Boo changed. When Blue, When Boo split, and then turned Fat Boo into chocolate and ate himself. I was like, "Yep, yeah, nope, I'm fucking done with this." Fucking. <laughs> it was very, very suggestive. <laughs> okay, back on track. What is your <laughs> least favorite mobile? Like. What mobile suit, like, you look at it and go, why? Hyok. Mobile suit Hyok. Why do you need a dome-shaped head Xeon mobile suit with whip-like arms that got destroyed in the first scene it showed up? I mean, a lot of my experience with Gundam, like that I can remember, is based off of Wing. Oh, like, I, I don't know. Really... Just Gundam. Oh no, I was gonna say I I don't remember a lot of the other series. Uh, like I remember the main Gundams and shit, but I don't remember like enemies or anything like that. But if going with Wing, I guess just because of lack of cognitive ability at the moment um i got mine yeah go ahead xeno saga episode one for playstation 2 had these agws's and quite literally your characters were stronger without them AGWS's. Because it literally was, it was literally putting a, it was literally putting Krillin with his Destructo Disc or putting Krillin in a mech suit with limited ammo. Ah. And you had to waste the turn to go into the mech suit because it was turn based. So it's just at the worst of two worlds. Yeah. Uh, they actually, in the second and third one, they gave you much better mech suits, and there was required mech suit battles. They did it like the same way that Gears did. Mm -hmm. But in episode one, it was an optional thing, and it was just completely pointless. You could level up your character. A max level character would thromp the most expensive hidden suit in the game. So those just didn't even need to exist at all. Nope. They were good cinematically for a couple of scenes, but that was it. <laughs> that sucks. I mean, I guess... So my choice is kind of hard-pressed because I like... I like the fact that... Uh, or I like all the main Gundams in Wing, obviously. Mm -hmm. But... Um, the rich kids that had the two curved blades and shit. Oh, I can never, I can't remember his name. You mean Sandrock? Yes. I, I wasn't a huge fan of Sandrock. Cause I mean, there, there, there were too many bladed fucking Gundams at that point anyway. True. But you had, you, you had, De you had death scythe. You had, um, Oh shit. What was, what was dudes before wing? The one that got, the one that got shot to shit, and he buried in the fucking ocean. I forgot the name of that one. I don't know. Yeah, I mean that was that had a gun, but it was also a bladed fucking one. Then you had uh, homeboys with the two 
dragon claws basically on his fucking hands. Yeah, Gundam Shenlong. <laughs> yeah, but didn't those like shoot? They shot out like you know scorpion style. And he did and have they would guns clamp too. Down. Yeah, I mean technically they all have guns. Yeah, but it's like. Why does every single one have bladed? And the things that I hated about Sandrock was like when he took out both of those fucking curved blades and just kind of like pincered guys together. And then it's just like, oh, yay. And then they would blow up. It's like, dude, if you put the two two hilts of those together, you can't continue going. No. So it's not like you're, it's not like um, you're going to, it's not like you're squeezing. Um, my question is, why would you have a curved blade when the beam swords exist? Again, that's why I'm not a huge fan of Sandrock. <laughs> well, they actually did explain that. Because Sandrock, out of all of them, because each one of the different Gundams in uh, Gundam uh, Wing were created by different nations for specific reasons. Um, the Sandrock came from the Middle East, and because they had limited resources, they were... Piloted weren't... by white people. Yeah. He wasn't supposed... <laughs> that's the thing, he wasn't supposed to be. Either way... Came from the Middle East, and they had limited resources, so they didn't have the same beam technology that was put into the majority of other mobile suits. That was their reasoning. I'm not saying it was the best reasoning, but that was their reasoning. Okay, you would you like to hear my... Okay, this is me showing my age. Go over to your neighbor's house, knock on the door. Can I have a cup of beam swords, please? <laughs> Well, fuck. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. Why did I just blank on main character of Wing's name? You. Thank you. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, when you, That's basically what you did. When the pilot of Death Scythe fucking saved him and, you know, saved his Gundam. He started putting shit from extra parts from the Death Scythe into, you know, his original one before he got Wing. Which, by the way, talk about the biggest fuck you in the world. It's like, hey, you just put all these parts in my shit. I got a new one that's better. <laughs> Thanks, ass face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I will say there was one concept by Wing that I really liked, and the mm -hmm. guy who fought, piloted Epion used it well. The, the uh, dolls. The AI controlled, remote controlled uh, mobile suits, the mobile suit dolls. Oh, God, why the fuck am I? And then the guy in Epion basically said, All right, I'm instead of using them as mass troops, I'm using them as weapons. So I, he took four of them with him and used them in conjunction with mm. his Epion and used the Epion system to help control them. Yeah, and that was one of the... I liked that scene. It was really cool, but it's really annoying to talk to other Gundam fans about that scene sometimes because they're all like, oh, see, that's proof that there's new... T no, there's not new types in fucking Gundam Wing. It's another no, universe. Which, no. which, which dude... <laughs> which pilot of Epion are you talking about? Are you talking about when the Hero had the mask. Him? Okay, so Zex. Zex, yeah, Zex is like, this is how you're supposed to use these dolls. Well, Zex and like was, whenever was... when when uh you shot him with the that beam rifle, the four dolls flew in front of him, interlocked their shields, and blocked the beam. Yeah, and well, then he they broke apart, and he fired his own. Yeah, so, so really Zex, Zex was always known to be a strategic mastermind. That's why that's why he like he was that's why he excelled with tall geese as well. It's probably yeah. one of the few only ones that could properly pilot tall geese. The other, the other one in the series was Hero. Because mm -hmm. they did swap at one point. Yeah. I, I, honestly, the, uh, like in all honesty, in modern anime, one of them would have been female and they would have wound up married with kids. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they kind of did that. Well, they... Kind of, but did that, but they kind of didn't with uh, a Witch from Mercury. Hey, everyone. I'm Caleb, or as you know me as Hey, I'm Chef. 
Uh, I am a somewhat content creator. I've kind of taken a break on making the actual content and just doing stuff here with Alan or Asian Faja Gamer. We have Monday, Bunch of Goofs, uh, the livecast podcast that him, Oda, and myself do. And every other Friday, we have the D and Deuce, D and D podcast that we are putting together. <clears throat> so if you want to see this face on anything right now, it's with Alan stuff, or you can follow me on all my socials at hey underscore I'm underscore chef. Until then, I will see you guys later. Have fun with the content. Peace. Well, hey there, everybody. Did you know that Asian Fasha Gamer has a Patreon? Well, that's right, everybody. And we're here to tell you about it together. Subscribers have a chance to see content early, as well as request content on higher tiers. That's right! You can ask Asian Fasa Gamer to read you a story, talk to you about lore, or gameplay, or many other things! But wait! There's more! Subs that have been stayed around for three months or longer get special gifts! And if we reach our stretch goal of ten subs or more, we will continue to add more to the Patreon, making it better for all of you! So please consider, at the very least, checking out Asian Fasa Gamer's Patreon! Maybe subscribing and supporting him. And of course, we thank you for your time. Greetings, everybody. My name is Odassian. My better half and I have a Flosstube channel, which is a podcast about needlepoint crafting, over on YouTube called The Slovak Farm. I also stream live on Twitch Saturdays and Sundays and join the afternoon playing various games that fit my fan. Hey everybody, Mr. Announcer and Random Skull are here to tell you about something amazing. Oh, that's right, we have a merch store known as the AFG Brand Store, where you can purchase many different things. Do you want a tin cup? Do you want a water bottle? Do you need a shirt? Do you need other things? Things that make you so that you support Asian Fasha Gamer? Well, check out the AFG Brand Store. But wait, there's more! That's right! We are going to be continuing to add to the merch store. On the monthly, we'll be adding in new designs, as well as, of course, introducing discounts for all of you! So check out the AFGBrandStore.com Everybody, that's the end of today's episode of Bunch of Goofs. I hope you enjoyed, and of course, let's say thank you to our cast, Asian Fasha Gamer, Odasia, and Hey, I'm Chef. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. By the way, it's uh, they call him Hero in the series. They ah. don't call him by his last name. Okay. And that, uh, that's why I was like, it's... sorry, I was just gonna read um, Absolute Zero's comment here. Y'all seen Alt Noah Zero? I don't know what that is. Negative. Nope. I have been so far out of anime for so long. Like I'm just now barely getting back into it. I'm busy doing my own things right now. Like... I was that stereotypical jock for a long time. It's a really good mech anime. I'll have to check it out. Right now, when it comes down to animes and stuff, watching stuff, I'm not really watching anything. The only things I'm really watching is uh, House of the Dragon with my wife. Other than that, though, I've got too much to do. Is My Hero dubbed yet? <clears throat> the, new like the, new, the newest season? I'm not sure. You're going to have to check Crunchyroll <clears throat> for that one. Yeah, the last time I checked Crunchyroll, it only had the subbed episodes. So that's probably where we're at right now. Yeah, but that was also like two months ago. Oh, well, double check. Um, I probably will. He said, oh, Absolute Zero says yes, but not fully. Okay. Fuck! So it's only some of them dub. So you just gonna have to wait a little bit longer for them to dub the rest of them so you can, you can binge it. Uh, well, I'm glad I'm not the only one who does that. Um, <laughs> you guys uh, ever watch Xeno and Xeno Gears? Do you remember... The mechs that went all Megazord. The Negative. elementals. Never played Xeno, Xeno Gears. No. They had one where each one was a different element, element, and they went all Gate Guardian. Oh, okay. 
And you had to fight that. That was a fun fight. Because they took all of the strengths from each of the previous boss battles. Because each one was a boss. And then it's like, they gave all of them the moves. And it was a really fun fight. So. Pivoting just slightly. Mm -hmm. Do you consider the Magnet Warriors from uh, from Yu-Gi-Oh! to be mechs or power suits or anything like that? I mean, technically they're robots. No, they're not. They're rocket type. They're golems. But they're magnetized. They're rock type, so there because there is a mech type. Yeah, I know. In Yu Gi Oh, twin, twin headed uh, dragon, robot dragon, or some shit like that is one of the. Oh no, I'm talking like the like the monster typing. Mm-hmm. There's a machine type, and there's a rock type. The magnet warriors are rock type, so they're magnets. They're golems. It's magnetism that allows them to connect together, not mechanical something or other. Well, fine. Fuck you too, rules lawyer. <laughs> I'm sorry I watched like two different videos on the subject. Because I was kind of wondering myself. I mean, <clears throat> so <laughs> we've talked about it before on other on the kaiju episode, actually. Oh. And Alan and Alan and I agreed that aside from Ep- uh, Gundam and Power Ranger Megazords that we would love to pilot Gypsy Danger. Favorite Jaeger. Because there there are there were two movies and there's a slew of fucking comics. I mean Gypsy's Gypsy's always gonna be my favorite uh Jaeger. Because he's uh, Gypsy's uh generation two? Yes. Well they upgraded so, Gypsy Danger to a Mark II, Mark Three, technically. Yes, but originally it, it was, was still a Mark II. And it was Mark II was still nuclear powered, was it not? Yes, analog. Yep. Yes. That that bullshit hurt my soul. Oh, the the end of the first one. <sighs> no, I know a lot a lot about electronics. If that thing <laughs> was analog, it would be steam powered. There's That's no such true. thing as a digital power source. Well, I think they're talking more along the lines of computers and shit, mm. not the power yeah, source. Yeah, it was itself. the same computer interface in all of them. That was a computer. It all was computers are digital. Oh. <laughs> there would be transistors everywhere if it was analog. It would sir, look like we, something out of the Fallout universe. Sir, we, we also don't live in that universe. It may be different. We don't have giant mechs kaijus coming out of the ocean. Actually, we do have giant mechs, though. We have one that kneels down and flips people off, and they just decommissioned it in Japan. Yeah. Because they're going to make another one, if I remember right. Yes, they are working on another one. This one should be able to not just walk, but actually, I think they're working on trying to make it run. Well, they haven't they haven't perfected walking yet. I know. I know. It's called Baby being steps, motherfuckers. It's called being fucking ambitious. What's funny is is that like there are like I understand what they were trying to say in the show, I just in the movie, I just don't think they called it right. And that's why it breaks my brain. I think it was the control system for the the control system for the reactor was analog because it was a steam powered nuclear reactor versus but they didn't explain it well and it hurts my brain. They go into more detail in the comics. As well as, you know, some of the equipment books. I've only seen the movies. Yeah, I, I mean, like mo- most people have only seen the movies. I want to start collecting the comics, but I don't know where to start. I mean, I know starting with issue one would be the way to go, but I don't know how... I don't know if it's like fucking... What is it? Detective Comet, Comics fucking Batman issue number one level of bullshit. Um, The comic books are really weird because... 
the first three follow mm -hmm. the first Jaeger developed and the realization that they need a two lobe system and the development of that two lobe system. But you Ooh, also. That was, that was a Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but you also do get to see in the first three comics the single pilot Jaeger in action. And then it's after the one, the... That, the one that Il Il Idris, or Idris Elba's uh, fucking character was controlling? No, the one before that, the prototype one. Ah. Yeah, you get to see that one in action. And then after that, um, they move on to the story of. A, other, a few other Jaeger pilots, and it kind of jumps around after that. So it gets a little weird. Do they, do they actually do they actually tell Marshall's story at all? <sighs> they talk about Pentecost. I'm not sure if they go fully into Pentecost's story though. His Jaeger was fucking insane though. The fact what that he it, called, like, high, it was called like High Tower or some shit. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. It was one of the most heavily armored mechs at the time. Yeah, it it was basically just a giant fucking shield that hit like a motherfucker. I don't even think it, if I remember, it didn't even have like a sword or anything like that. It was literally just using its fucking hands. Mm -hmm. You just reminded me of one of the most epic mech for no reason other than to have mechs in them anime ever. Big O. Yeah? Oh, Big O. Fucking the pistons that and his goddamn Gundam. elbows. Yeah, pistons in his goddamn elbows. Those are some big ass pistons too. I mean, just imagine the force behind they were that. Pissed. Yeah, they they they, they they were pistons for the punch. Oh no, I actually, I think they were more like chambered rounds for like a shotgun because the way they exploded, it was more like it was actually like winding it back and then exploding them out. Uh, I think they explained it more along the lines of like the combustion in a car engine. It's yeah. a giant piston that compresses gas. Yeah, so Big O was essentially based off of a steampunk universe. So yeah, it is it is a piston system. That's awesome. That that's cool. That's cool. It's, it's it. fucking insane. I was like, also I was also thinking of a different type of piston. Oh, okay. I and if I about that combustion yeah. engine piston. If I yeah. Yeah, and if I remember <laughs> correctly, the way that the piston actually works, because I actually looked this up after a while, because Remy explained this to me, but the piston itself works like a diesel piston, so there's not a spark plug in there. No, it it's uses just yeah, it just uses the compression. Yep. Because uh, that's why you have to hit plug it in when it's cold. Yeah. Uh, also, fun fun fact about engines and, pish and pistons. Do you know why it's such a bad thing to get water into your engine? And for those of you listening and or watching this, if any of you dumbasses go mudding, this is why your shit blows up. <laughs> if you get water into your engine, water does not compress. So what happens? Your piston rod turns into a fucking S. I have seen it 17,000 times in the Almost ten years I was working in motor in power sports. <laughs> it's not a. It's not good. It's not pretty when it happens, and it, it's expensive. There's one other. There's one other thing about water that I don't think a lot of people realize. Hmm. Water. When water turns into a gas. The amount of energy released is insane. Yes. And also, so water isn't wet. Shut up! We're not having that <laughs> argument. <laughs> But that was that was one of my biggest pet peeves about Big O is like there was like one episode, I think, where he was fighting something underwater or he came out of the water or some shit and fucking the piston arm worked almost immediately. It's like, no. Just no, that is not <laughs> how that would work. Um, there would need to be priming. There'd have to be that piston need to be heated up properly for there to be compression. And if it's not sealed. That water needs to drain. That's actually why I thought the piston was a piston with explosives, not regular compression, because black powder <coughs> is its own oxidizer. Hmm. Yes, but black so powder does so If it was using something like black powder, then it would work underwater. <sighs> you can so light that's most of Just imagine how much that's fucking black powder piston. it would take to power that fucking piston, though. 
That would be fucking insane. Holy shit. It's got it's got two two motherfuckers in each arm, fucking straight up old fashioned like coal train shoveling black powder into this fucking piston. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Let's see. Absolute Zero says the ocean is a soup. Yes. Ocean is soup. The ocean is a soup. Yep. And it's pre-seasoned. It's got it's got seasoning. It's got uh, other minerals and shit. It's got fucking meat. It's got vegetables. It's got fucking broth. It's got protein in and, many, many different ways. And a lot of whale cum. A lot. The majority of of uh, sea monster sightings back in the day were whale penises. Okay, so that whole comment that I said, I legitimately knew somebody that <clears throat> I, I legitimately knew somebody that thought this. They said, and I quote, "The reason the ocean is so salty is because of all the leftover whale cum." I, uh, 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 I, I thought that, like, I tried to explain to them why they were dumb, but they just weren't grasping the fact that they were dumb. Dude, they were too dumb to understand they were dumb. If that is that, if that, if they actually believe that, your attempt was already a losing battle. This was also the same person that thought it'd be a good idea to get. We'll go with oral from a chick. Instead of using whipped cream, he put um, uh, Frank's Red Hot. Is this the same guy that lit himself on fire? No. No. Okay. The guy that lit himself on fire was my brother. Um, uh, with the Red Hot sauce, I think he did light himself on fire. Yeah, just yeah. a different way. That's called a chemical burn. <laughs> Can we Caps. go back to giant mech suits now? <laughs> Because that hurt I my mean, marble sack. I mean, I mean, technically, we were all mech pilots at one point. We are, we are, we are still mech pilots. We are brains, no, skeletonically piloting our meat suits. But we were piloting. We were piloting a mech suit that is our mother at one point. We were. We were a mech suit piloting a mech suit. Or or. At this point, since we've been birthed, are we technically just the ghost in the machine? Son of a bitch. <laughs> <Ta -da>. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. That's, that's right. Now I'm a philosophizer. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. I don't I don't know, Zero. We may, I don't think most of us were passengers. Uh, if you were anything like me, I made my mom's pregnancy a living hell. So, um, oh no, I was definitely pretty sure I controlled some shit. <laughs> Put it this way, um, I was the reason why my mother did not eat certain things and ate too many of other things. At least that's how she says it. Okay then. What other like powerized powerized mechs and shit like that have we not touched on? I mean, we've talked about a lot of mechs. We haven't really talked about a lot of exosuits. I mean, because when it comes to exosuits, you really. I mean, you have the number one that everybody talks about Ridley is fucking Iron Man. In aliens. Oh. Ooh. 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 Deep cuts. Okay. Because my thought is, if that was their idea of construction equipment. I would love to see their combat version of that thing. I mean, I have a feeling their combat version of that thing is very much equivalent to the combat version of the one in a Avatar. Oh yeah, it had to have been because that was. I mean, that was essentially the power loader with guns and a, and a shield and a fucking fucking Rambo knife. Oh right. Okay, only one of them had a knife, and that was because only one of them, only one of them had a knife that we saw. True. Everybody else either got clawed to fucking death or got trampled by the fucking six-legged everything feather wear feather wearing fucking rhinos. <laughs> True. But speaking the of rhinos the... that look like they're going to the carnival. 
<laughs> okay. Back Side to- note to fucking Avatar. Every single animal in that fucking movie looks like, hey, we're going to be on a float in Carnival. Listen, every animal in that movie was done after James Cameron went to New Orleans, dropped six tons of acid, and went, ooh. <laughs> Basically. Or Rio. No, if he went to Rio, then we would have a giant Christ the Protector somewhere. <laughs> Big ups to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking gotta love Helsing and Bridge. Oh, yeah. I can't believe Team um, Four Star didn't do any, like, mech-style, like, Gundam abridged. Because Gundam has some long-ass fucking shit, too. It's because, so far, the, the four main members of Team Four Star that are still there, the, the original ones, they hate Gundam and things like that. Oh God. I got a really interesting mech suit. Okay. From the uh, Death City from Soul Eater. Ooh, yeah. I mean, Ooh. is that a mech suit or is that is that more like Baba Yaga style? I it's mean, it's a mech suit. It's got legs. It's got arms. And it was so piloted. Does Yaga, so does so does Baba Yaga's hut. <laughs> I mean, is Baba Yaga's yeah, hut a, the... a mech suit? Are we going to no, consider that? Okay. okay. Wait, wait, wait. Is the I'm other thing organic? It though? had a chop fighting fight with the other base that turned into a spider, which is like, okay, now we're just having crap. That what, 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 what? I like, need to go. I how the heck did Soul this show again. go from kid turns into Scythe and attacking a witch? Go to let's have a Megazord battle. I mean, that was that was Soul Eater though. <laughs> that that's. Dude, yeah. that writer and that that mangaka, he is <clears throat> interesting, to say the least. I want, I want to get all of Soul Eater's manga because I loved the fucking series. <clears throat> Definitely like, worth that it. series, fucking amazing. You know, also you know because we because we did talk about organic. I'm gonna talk about mechs that stem that line, that toe that line very much so. Evangelion. mech suits but the mech suits are aliens i mean there's another reference to that oh what the hell is that smell damn it i could have been at a barbecue those are I, I, I okay. Those are exosuits. I, those got to be exosuits, even if they're oh, organic. Those, those are definitely those are definitely exosuits. Yeah. Um, I got another fun <clears throat> exosuit that's really weird. Hmm. The Giver unit. Ooh, that is one we haven't uh, talked about. Remind me. I I know the name. I cannot it, think right now. It ha- it's the little. It's the exosuit that's got this thing going on on it. its head. It's got boob cannons. And, uh, uh, wrist blades. From what wrist blades and the chest opens up to fire a Kamehameha out. Boop. From what series? It's called Giver. The series Giver. is literally called Giver. Oh, oh, oh shit, yeah. I mean come uh-huh. on, boob cannons. <clears throat> boob cannons. I thought that was uh <clears throat> Austin Powers? Powers. No, that was boob guns. And those those were fembots. Bring out the fembots. <laughs> Bring out the sharks with the lasers. It's like, oh, they're, they're, they went extinct. I got extinct. one that's not a combat model, but it's a really funny mech suit. That's mm. just a funny concept. Men in black. The little alien driving the, peop- <clears throat> the person suit. I actually the like those. The galaxy is on Orion's belt. Yep. Would you consider... I'm lo- I- oh, sorry. I was going to say, in that scene, I love the fact. I love the fact that they referenced the fact that it wasn't his first language. So he's like, the galaxy is on Orion's ba ba ba. What is word? Belt. Yes. That's eh, dead. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> so <clears throat> I know this is off topic, but I gotta ask, what did you guys think about the newest Men in Black movie, the one with Chris Hemsworth? I haven't watched it. I haven't seen it. Okay. I haven't seen it either, so I don't have an opinion about it yet. I haven't even seen the one where they go back in time to find Kay. 
I haven't watched that one either. I don't want to. I don't know if I want to watch that one. I hate. I don't know. Time travel as an added concept to continue a storyline. I don't really like it. I also have a problem with prequels. They are very hard to do well. There are some that do it well, but you are right. I agree with you. Like, the level of... If you do not have a dedicated fan to to the mythos, prequels are a nightmare. Sir, if you don't have a dedicated fan to the mythos... Media changes is fucking horrible. Oh yeah. No, I'm talking about the direct. If the director and the producer and the writer don't know the story they're making a prequel to, it's gonna end bad. And I'm making the argument that if the director, the producer, the writer don't know the story that they're changing the media to, <laughs> that's how we get Dragon Ball Evolution. That's how we get Avatar: The Last Airbender. That's how we that's get, how we get Halo. Get that's how we get. <laughs> oh. That's how we get yeah, Halo. I'm so glad that. I'm so glad that series got canceled. Yeah. I'm so glad it got canceled. I'm sorry to the people who lost their jobs because of it, but that series was just terrible. You know, the sad part is, is I like the dude who played Master Chief. I like him as an actor. He does well. Fuck, why did he always take his goddamn helmet off? Um, Here's my question. All they had to do was not make it Master Chief and make him a Halo Four. Exactly. That's that's or Spartan that's, Four or Spartan Five. Yeah, that's what that's what we talked about. If they would have made it like not Chief and just had Chief make cameos, <clears throat> then it would have been fucking great. Granted, also getting rid of the Elite Arbiter and making it a fucking human—that was a load of bullshit. That was one of my, other than you know Master Chief's helmet they... being. Oh, you didn't see that? You didn't know? Dude, they straight up uh, took a human child and bl- adopted her, and she became the fucking arbiter for them. She was a she was like a early 20s blonde chick. By, so by the So basically, the you don't want to spend the money cop out. Yeah, basically. They don't want to spend the money on the CGI. The but, the, but the problem is, is they had the rest of the fucking covenant there. That's true. That didn't make any sense. So, they, had, they had elites. They had the prophets. They had fucking grunts. They had fucking everything. Why the fuck did you make the Arbiter a fucking human? Also, isn't that a direct violation of what the Covenant prophets for? wanted? Yes. Because the prophets were afraid of humans because they knew who they actually were. Yes. Secretly and knew that they were the actual inheritors. So that's why they went to war to wipe them out because they were afraid of them. Yes. The only thing I wish they, they would have done. They wouldn't allow a human. Granted, I never watched season two because I stopped watching season one, like four episodes in or some stupid ass shit. <clears throat> the one thing I wish I would have seen was a live action version of the flood. Hmm. Well, look at what Rakab here has said. So Rakab actually said, and also welcome Rakab. Thank you so much for being here on on a uh, bunch of goofs. We do appreciate you joining us. Um, he says Christopher Nolan said that he's in the market to buy the rights to the show after it got canceled. That would be a good. That would be a good move if he completely retconned the entire fucking series and started over and was true to the source material. Because that is the main bitch and the main problem that every single fan of Halo that watched that fucking series. Like, and the thing is, the shitty thing is, you take the Halo out of that series, and it's watchable. But because no. it's Halo, you destroyed everything that Halo was. You did. You turned John Spartan into. Uh, you you t- you uh, you trashed Halo. To calm your nerves. One more comment. You trashed Halo more than three four three did. And that's difficult. Old. All right, I have one that's very close to Chef's heart. Okay. Armando's wearing power armor. Armor? No. But there's technology in it. There's technology. technology in the there's place technology in the wrist blades. It is a power enhancing suit you get flight no no, those are 
those are add-ons. That's not the armor itself is not powered. Hmm. Beskar is then not why powered. Why is there so much circuitry in it? Be I mean, it's the same thing as if you take a 91 S10 and put a fucking Bluetooth Bluetooth uh, sur- like fucking head unit into it. Oh no, I'm talking like in the first when the Mudhorn wrecked mm-hmm. Mando's sh- chest plate. There's all kind of sparks and stuff, and there's all this technology in there. That was because that wasn't Beskar. In season uh, one, when he gets paid, when he gets paid for delivering Grogu, delivering Grogu, mm-hmm. um, he got that entire stack of shit was all Beskar, and that got turned into his Mandalorian armor. Okay, so the not good armor is sort of kind of power armor, kind of. It, was I it mean, like it's, repurposed it's, stormtrooper armor or something? No, it was a it was a Beskar alloy. Okay. So it's it's not total Beskar, so they back it with some technology like some energy dampening shit and all that fun stuff. But like all the circuitry in the side in the like gauntlets, the jetpacks, the um the shit in the helmet for the guidance systems and all that. That doesn't really make it power armor because it doesn't increase your strength or anything like that. So they're literally a couple of servos <laughs> shy, and that's about it. Basically. I, and, guess, you know, I guess it'd be the comparison to a well-equipped uh, military soldier. Because you got to think, they have all a bunch of shit on them, too. Well, like I said, it's, it's, it's the same thing as like taking a 91 S10 completely analog as shit and adding add-ons to it to make it more modern so you have to add circuitry and all that fun shit okay because the the armor itself is literally just straight beskar like let's forge this shit out into fucking armor and then you start adding all the goodies to it but there's i guess there's so there's nothing in the armor that enhances physical capabilities to a point where like there's increased strength or anything like that no it just makes him a shit and i kind of knew the answer i just want to let chef go on to talk talk about something he liked Mm -hmm. yeah no i mean i like that like in that case like they they pull armor off very well when it comes to the mando shit because like it doesn't give them physical abilities it gives them technological abilities that's like you know the reason why nobody ever uses a scope in fucking in uh in star wars or aims down sights in star wars is because in the mandalorian helmets is a essentially a master chief style targeting system so it automatically like if there is a scope or whatever a scope it automatically connects to that but it's a wife wireless kind of connection you don't have to put your eyeball onto it to make it work correct and do you know why the stormtroopers couldn't aim for crap because they didn't have that have it no they did but they went with the cheapest bidder and it never worked well i mean that that's that's the thing with uh with stormtroopers though anyways like their armor was never meant to work the reason oh, no. they... sorry correct me if i'm wrong but this mm-hmm. is what i heard about in the lore is the reason why stormtroopers like hit their head on doors and couldn't shoot and even captain rex mentioned this in rebels that because the display didn't work as intended because the batteries kept dying and it kept breaking it actually went from a visual aid to the stuff that was supposed to light up becoming an impedant so it actually blinded them. Yeah. Uh, the stormtroopers like, more than the clone troopers. Right, because the, the clone troopers, it worked. Mm-hmm. The stormtroopers, the they again, decided to go to the Munin and be like, hey, find the cheapest bidder. Well, I mean, uh, granted, like, like I was starting to say, like the stormtroopers storm were never meant to be functional. That's why a blaster shot will take out a stormtrooper, whereas a clone trooper will take a couple of shots. Or, like, getting force thrown by a Jedi kills Stormtroopers. Stormtrooper armor is literally meant to be exactly uniform, so everybody looks the same, to be an intimidation factor. Because everybody looks the same, 
you don't know how many people are coming at you. It's disorienting as fuck. You thought you killed this dude, but hey, he's standing right in front of you again. Not that you know that it's another person. Yeah. So their armor is the most cheaply made armor in Star Wars. And uh, Absolute and Zero. That. Yes. They weren't, cons they didn't, they got their training in the field. They're like, all right, put your armor on, go shoot things. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it was literally like just a giant insult to every country that just forces people to get the cheap crap and go pick a fight. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. And. Ooh. Ooh. Kind of mech -ish? But the ATATs and the fucking walkers and all that shit in Star Wars. Mm. They're pilotable. Yeah. It's essentially Star Wars version of the fucking Megazord. I kind of wish they had arms, though. That would make them funnier. That would make it hilarious. Okay. Just imagine oh, no, this four walker just... thing and these little arms in front of them. What the fuck, dude? No. What little. No, the thing is. For especially like the at at the big one, if you yeah. actually put a swiveling turret that had like arms with blasters for hands, for as anti personnel weapons, that would actually have helped it severely. So you want to give it arms and revolvers, ooh, ooh, just ooh, like the okay, ship. First off, <laughs> that would be fucking hilarious. But <laughs> recap brought up something too. Uh, while we were talking about the Mandalorians, like I just saw it. Um, oh, doo -doo -doo -doo. that's why I always wondered how Mace Windu was able to cut off Jango Fett's head in Clone Wars. I thought Beskar was only able to be damaged by Beskar and not like not even sabers. So, Mandalorian armor is not a full set of knight armor like medieval knights. Uh, as someone who wears the shit, wears the shit because you know I cosplay as a Mando from your chest plate doesn't cover your entire chest. Your shoulders don't cover your entire shoulders. There's still your flight suit gap between your shoulder pauldron, which ends roughly about here, the in between, like about the middle of your middle of your trap. And then your helmet ends at your jawline. So that gives you quite a bit of space to get your shit cut off. Um, also, it's not a full piece of uh, arm armor, although heavy mandos are a bit of a difference. Uh, like Paz Vizsla's armor is as close to fully enclosed as you can get as a mando. <laughs> There's also Tar Vizsla's yeah, armor that looks fucking badass. Yeah. As somebody who's actually watched a lot of armor videos and I'm really interested in it, basically it shows that the Mandalorians value mobility more than they do protection. They protect the vitals. Yep. To protect the vital spots that really suck if they get shot and the spots that are exposed except for if... Basically, if you're not Mace Windu, you're not chopping a head off. Yeah, because they still have the protection, but they need the dexterity to be able to move around. Yeah, now, granted, and they also there... need to be able to run around. Mm -hmm. There's also a reason why Mandalorians were notoriously the most effective Jedi hunters. Because they used fucking physical ammo. They use physical ammo, which uh, which lightsabers can't deflect, and everything that they have is practical. Like even the vibro knife is a knife that vibrates back and forth, a fucking fast as shit. Also, you know, just <laughs> just to Basically. mention this, Jango Fett was not a true Mandalorian, though he was wearing their armor. He's not a true Mandalorian in the same fact that Din is not a true Mandalorian. Yeah. He was Din, an adoptee, right? Yes, he was adopted. Correct. And it kind of sucks because I like Jango Fett and his story. I do. But I don't like the fact that they turned Boba Fett into something that kind of took away from his story because Boba Fett was meant to be the Mandalorian that fixed everything. Yeah, until his dad got his head cut off. Until his dad got his head cut off. You know what I wish they would fucking show? Like, I really wish they would fucking show this because it's such an awesome scene. 
and they actually were in the process of anim- animating it, but it got cut from Clone Wars. Oh no! You know how you know how Boba got the dent in his helmet, right? Yeah. So, for those of you who don't know, Boba Fett has a dent roughly above his, I think, right eyebrow mm-hmm. uh, on his helmet because Boba's armor is not true Beskar. It is a Beskar alloy. It is very high Beskar alloy, but it's still a Beskar, Beskar alloy. He got into a gunslinger high noon style duel with Cad Bane. Oh. And they drew on each other <laughs> and Cad Bane got the shot off and it hit him in the fucking head. It knocked his ass out and dented his fucking helmet. I'm they actually were... surprised Cad Bane let him live. Uh, something happened. I can't remember what, but, uh, I don't think, I think it wasn't intentional. Yeah. Boba got in the way of one of Cad's bounties because they are going for the same bounty. Uh, And I think I'm just saying Cad Bane's a ruthless person. I thought he would just shoot him to shoot him. Oh yeah. Very much so. But I I think Boba, like Boba owed him a favor or he owed Boba a favor or some shit. I can't remember exactly because they never finished the fucking scene. Like it's in it's um, in the it's in the books and the comics and shit. But the fact that Absolutely. it should have been ahead, animated, really that's some awesome. Oh, oh, what <laughs> would War? Yes. yes, yes, I would actually. So, Absolute Zero ask is, uh, would Warframes count as exosuits? Yes, they do. They count as they exosuits, exosuits, but they're also alive. I was gonna say they're biomechanical exosuits, are they not? Mm-hmm. Also, they're technically not piloted inside or some. Uh, the, they're remote controlled or pilotable by the inside, but the person phases, he doesn't yeah, wear it. He's technically not in them or wearing them. He is in Possessing there. Them. He's possessed. Yeah, it's a possession, really. It's... Doesn't the <laughs> Tenno still stay in the pod? Uh, it depends. Um, it, so transference. It depends on the Warframe, doesn't it? Not necessarily. It depends on the transference. So, or. Uh, Transference is a connection that goes two ways, which is why the the operator or Tenno can teleport and actually appear in battle. Which is also why they actually are damaged. Even if they're in the pod, they can still sustain damage if their exosuit take uh, if their warframe takes damage because that connection is two ways. It's not exactly like going... physical, but it's not exactly not. You I know got... the one thing that surprises me about Star Wars? Or go mm-hmm. ahead. Sorry, Steph. No, no, go ahead. There isn't power armor. No, there's not. And that's like you know they have the technology. Look at yeah, but they, they they also have the force. Not for no. every single not for every Very single person. Rare individuals thing. have the force. But, like, basically, instead of using power armor, they just make a droid for it. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, I mean, there are... Why do I have to do this when I can, this robot can do it? <laughs> there are some exosuits that are, like... But they're not used for battle. They're just, like, for construction. I think that's the only exosuits we see. It's like, it, it, it's like Ripley suit and aliens. Mm-hmm. There are ones that we same, saw same in um, the Clone Wars episode where they go to... Shit, what's the name of that jungle planet? Uh yes. There's a few. It it it's Aura. huh? Aura? No, it's o the one O R something. It's the one where um what are they called? The the Rancors come from. Or at least yeah, they're I don't remember. Yeah, it, I, I Dathomir? No, not Dathomir. Oh, shit. I forgot the name no, of it. No, Dathomir's where Dathomir's where the Night Sisters and like Darth Maul's race comes from. Okay. Uh, different continuities have different places they come from. So the uh, what, uh, what either way, in in this particular episode where we see them going into the jungle area, we actually see a couple of exosuits setting up the base. Yeah. They they use them for construction. That's literally it. Um and we're talking about biomechanical piloting, like Warframe. I've got one. Oh, that you don't even realize what don't even realize where I'm going with this. Huh? The the bioengineered Navi from fucking uh, Avatar. 
Same process as fucking Warframe. I mean, technically, yes. The only difference I can actually think of is the fact that it, it's not inherent to them. I mean, it's by bi it's bioengineered, you know, body that can only sustain itself. No, no, no. I'm saying in order to control them, they need a machine. Mm. The Tenno don't need a machine. That's I the mean, only difference. Yeah, true. But I mean, it's psychically, psychically, psychically linked. Technically, even if you're using a machine for it, you're still your body. No, I mean, I'm it's saying, no, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. It is um, a very interesting way to look at it, but it's it's true. It it, <laughs> it it fucking fits. I thought of another video game that had exosuits. Oh, and I uh, absolutely loved. Sorry, I just wanted to uh, uh, just see this because Absolute Zero did confirm Rancors are from Dathomir. The ones that I was thinking about um, is there's just a variant that lives on that planet. Yeah, Starship Troopers does have those same style of exosuits. But But they suck. They really did. I mean, granted, everything in Starship Troopers sucked. How many bullets did it take to take down a bug? But <laughs> I mean that dude like literally unleashed an entire mag on it and it was still moving. Yeah, he mag dumped it and it was like, yeah, I'm still gonna kill you. Um, but um, no. So one of my I actually absolutely love the game just because of the mechanics of it. People are like, it has no end game, and they trashed it so bad that the negative reviews fucking stuck. Oh. And that would be Anthem. <sighs> that game, they should have waited six months to release it. They really should have. It, it was It was going up against so much shit at the same time. Oh, party, no, party that's not, no. Hydrate. no, it's the fact that the first two, the first update between beta and release of the game was over eight gig. Yeah, the game it actually doubled the size. No, it was eighty gig. I'm sorry, it doubled the size of the game. It, yeah, I mean, Call, it's because Call of Duty Warzone did the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's because they were using the same coding that essentially installed the packets but didn't remove the excess coding yeah they they basically remade the game and it's like okay you get a second copy on top of that first copy it's like wait what <laughs> my computer can't handle this yeah they, they just needed to wait six months and iron it out but that's like most triple a games nowadays oh yeah i and mean there's day one it, patches that are over 100 gigs now so it also yeah, didn't horrid. It didn't help that they almost almost ended up facing the same thing that happened to um, uh, uh, Red. CD Project Red. Yeah. For Cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. They they ended up getting some death threats and stuff because people were like, "Get your game out!" And like, if you want a good game, sh patience, wait shut your up. shit, and shut the fuck up. Uh, I got another yeah. mech suit that I I don't know I know of it, but I don't know it exactly. Um. Sweet Tooth. Sweet His Tooth. His truck turned into a mech. Twisted Metal. Yeah, in the first one, if I remember right. I think that counts. That definitely counts. Even though it scared the shit out of me. The thing is, is that power armor or is that a <laughs> mech suit? Because he wears it like power armor, but it outfunctions like a mech suit. Did he grow bigger? The truck. Oh, it's just the car transformed around him. It became a suit. It's almost it's almost like a transformer. Yeah. I want to say exosuit. I want to lean on exosuit with that one. Still that, but it's like what the fuck? Not to not to discredit the sweet tooth power armor, but going back to Anthem, like that game had so much promise, mm -hmm. and the mecha the mechanics in the flying, in the combat, in all that shit. And the what three different types of javelins were fucking amazing. They oh, just ran out. Fun as heck. They ran out. Of, you first off, it's on Game Pass. You can still download it and play it. Mm -hmm. But uh, they they just ran out of content for the speed runners of the game, and they didn't want to wait until the next fucking DLC or anything. And uh, 
you know, it's just everybody trashed the game. Like I personally absolutely loved the game. Yeah. I was the fucking, I was the big tank with the shield and I beat the fuck out of shit with that shield. I will say one, I had some technical problems and two, I didn't speed run the game and its story was about as long as Mr. Pandaria. I know. Like I said, it, but like Alan brought up too, they were bullied into releasing early. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I, that's I, no, but that's just one. Anybody who bullies somebody to get what they want that way, you should send them the alpha version that includes a call home function, so you can get their home address and then call the FBI. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's sad. It's it's that, a sad like narrative of how the gaming community is like y'all bitches need to fucking calm your shit down and and the the bad part is is like they were going to try to fix the game they were going to add more content and shit but as they were making the patch to go 2.0 on anthem the parent the developer the actual parent company fucking pulled the plug on it It it's like ea (laughs) uh was it ea I thought it was Yubi. Yep, because it was... No, it's on EA because it's on the EA streaming service. Ah, okay. That's why it's on Xbox Game Pass because they com- the EA combined their free-to-play Pass. library with Game Passes. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, granted, I, I bought Anthem, so I can play it whenever I want it anyway. But... Uh, you know, yeah, a, it's still showing up on Game Pass. Another exosuit game, I can't believe we haven't fucking talked about it, which... Had a lot of fun, had a lot of potential, but sadly kind of fell into fell to the wayside because one, it didn't get enough content, and two, it got really repetitive. Hmm. Exo Primal. Yeah. Dude, you and I played the fuck out of that game. And I, I was hoping for more. I really was, but they just They, they t- were just they were too slow with releasing content. Mm-hmm. I got another one I know that Fosh is a big fan of. Oh? Armored Core. I was oh. just getting ready to say the same thing. Yes. Armored Core. Definitely. It was one of those... It was Armored Core literally was a creation of Spite by Atlas yeah. before they were from software. It was because they had the chance to make a Gundam game. And then Bandai's like, nah, you know what? Never mind. We're going to pull back. And they're like, all right, fine. We already built like half of the fucking game. We're going to release it, but we're going to call it something else. And lo and behold, yeah, and we I got mean, Armored the, Core. That's the thing. If, if they would have actually gone through with it, I think that would have been one of the biggest Gundam games ever. Because like now all Gundam games are essentially like Di- shitty clones of Armored Core mixed with like fucking fighting games. Or Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, same thing. Do you know another game that is was made because a franchise pulled out? Giggity. StarCraft. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It was supposed to be a Warhammer game. Yep. Warhammer 40k. That's why the that's why the humans look have space marines. That's why the Tyranids and the Zerg are basically so, butt bunnies. Yeah, they're pretty much the same fucking thing. And the Protoss is basically what is it? The Eldar. Mm-hmm. And the thing yeah, that you notice the similarities, that's not an accident. It's because they altered what they had to make it an independent IP while still keeping with what they already had made. And you know why Games Workshop pulled that contract? They're because it's Games Workshop and they're fucking idiots. Because the CEO did not like how much money was projected Blizzard to make compared to them. Yeah. Do you not know what Games Workshop is doing to 40k right now? Oh, yeah. Oh. The, not raping it? They're no, distru- the fact that you are... So, 3D printers are a thing now. And it's, they hate it. Instead of selling the files, people are pirating the files and then selling the files to other people and et cetera, et cetera, printing their own shit and selling the figs and everything like that at better quality than what fucking games workshop does. So games workshop said, all right, 
all of these websites, there were like five main big websites for file sharing for STL files. They sued them all in one lawsuit. They lost said lawsuit and then turned around and was countersued by those five things and lost that lawsuit. But, and because they lost the lawsuits, they're like, fine, all official Warhammer tournaments, you have to use Games Workshop's fix. If you get caught using a printed figurine, you are removed from the tournament and fined $500. Not only that... You know, that'd still be cheap. Oh, huh? So Wouldn't it still be cheaper than buying their figures? Yeah, but you also get banned from all wor Games Workshop official tournaments. And not only... You know what? I'm sorry. How many... Go ahead, Fosh. Yeah. Sorry, I was going to say, because they, they didn't only do that. They also targeted the stores. Any mm -hmm. stores that run tournaments, that are caught with those figures at those tournaments, will no longer be eligible for licensing to sell Games Workshop products. They lost that world. They lost that lawsuit because they are not official tournaments. Oh, really? They so you God. can you can do unofficial tournaments with 3D printed at actual like Coliseum Comics down here is a big comic store chain, and at least two of them in the area run Warhammer tournaments, but they're not officially licensed tournaments through uh, Games Workshop. So, um, oh man, the amount of they money they're losing, the, money. the amount Correct. of money they're fucking losing. Yeah. And I mean, that, that's well, here's another... my question. Why didn't they just make, why didn't they just pull a nap? Why didn't they just pull a, uh, basically like just pull a, okay, we'll release these good files and we'll charge you a, like a quarter of file. Because they're the same mindset so as Watsy. Why didn't they try something like that? Yeah, I mean, let's let's be honest. Game Workshop is the tabletop miniature version of fucking Activision or EA. Oh, I, I'm no, I'm not discounting that. I'm just saying a little bit of common sense that they'd be rolling in it right now. <clears throat> or, or instead of fucking trying to sue these fucking websites and hosting all that shit, fucking partner with them. Contract. Get, get a some... cut out of their fucking profits. Uh, all right. Would you? I, I can't believe I'm about to say this. Take a page out of Bethesda's book. Yeah. Embrace the basically what's a modding community. Mm -hmm. These 3D printers are basically modders. Embrace them, and then just put it into your con into into your thing that any figurine entered into an official tournament can. At, can be take can have the design taken by that company and used as their own. Or you know another fantastic fucking way to do it? Pull a Twitch. Make all these printers independent contractors. Shazam. Instead give of us, giving them give a, us a dollar for every five dollars. Well, that's a, instead of giving them a paycheck, give them a cut of the sale price of the fucking of the print. Give them a monthly allotment dependent dependent upon uh dependent upon their projected sales for materials because resin's fucking expensive right now. Yeah. But uh give them a give them an allotted like allowance and then give them a a, a portion of the sale. Um but I will say this there's one other thing they can do that they wouldn't do, but it'd be so intelligent. Hmm. Make better shit than what the than what you can make with a three D printer. The so the reason the three D printing for Warhammer is so big is because Games Workshop stuff is actually pretty good. Truthfully, it is. The problem is, if you were to get what is it a a fucking Warhammer Titan or something like that, I forget the colossal Titan. Mm -hmm. This fucking figurine is four feet tall. And costs about five grand. Not even put together. No paint, nothing. No, thank you. And now, granted, these are the these are the titans. So they're they're the giant 
mech suit or the mechs you know, the giant mechs with the big ass guns that fucking decimate all and cost about 10,000 points out of your army to fucking play but you know again these 3d printers are able to print them piece by piece put them together and then sell it for a fraction of the price so yeah they may be going through like two three hundred dollars worth of resin to print that thing but they're selling it for 1200 bucks versus whereas what games workshop is still using injection molds for their for all of their figurines and in all honesty the the quality and the consistency of that quality shows and how much they give a shit and it's not there all they want is your money and they keep spewing the same stuff out to get it because so many people are just Head over heels in love with Warhammer, and Warhammer can do no wrong because it's basically the person they mar- the thing they married. Yeah. Well, I mean, look look at fucking Henry Cavill. Mm-hmm. True. I don't know. It just, it just pisses me off because like, I have friends that bought in like expensive dreadnoughts and stuff like that, mock kits from his official Games Workshop, right? They bring them home. They're going all ready to bring them up. They take them out, and you get one with, like, a bolter that looks like it's half fucking melted or something. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, whereas, like my buddy has, like, four 3D, four resin 3D printers, and he prints most of his stuff, and he prints stuff for other people. And, like, he printed me an old one-eye character because he was trying to get me to get me into Warhammer and I wanted to play Tyranids. The old one eye that he printed me had more detail than the one that you get from Games Workshop. Also, you do realize that 3D printers have gotten like you can probably spend 3 to 600 dollars in order to like, make one for like I actually was looking for D&D character to uh you can things. get them for you can get them for under 200 bucks now. Yeah, I was actually looking at the ones that could do bigger stuff, like they could do the dragons. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. There's ones on on Amazon went that you from can get. Hundred to six hundred dollars. Yeah, the the Elegu the Elegu is like a hundred and eighty nine dollars, I think, for a resin printer. Mm-hmm. And then it's only like it's only like a hundred bucks for the UV um, or the the acid wash and the uh, the UV uh, curing, curing station. station. Yeah, I was actually looking for ones to make. Uh, cosplay parts as well i was trying Ooh. to oh, okay. no, I'm, I'm just i'm just saying do you want to First make like masks and armor the... and shit uh you wouldn't want to use the resin for that though yeah you no, probably want to use the pla like one right independence i one i was actually i just looked at it went nope too much i was actually gonna ask chef about it but i was actually thinking of doing that like to make like cosplay and just use that for like pendants and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, that would work really well. And I mean, like even the even the smaller printers, like you can print a full Mando helmet on it. You have to do it by piece and then piece it together. But with a little bit of Bondo and fucking super glue, it fucking works just fine. A little sanding and paint, and you won't even notice the seams. Well, that's the thing. The reason I had that bottle of fucking ABS resin right there. Is like because I like to cover my shit in resin mm-hmm. and then sand and paint the resin on top of the like Sintra or like my helmet is three D is three D printed at a PLA in fucking Florida. Hmm. Yeah. So I was like, mm, I can either I can either use Bondo, which is toxic as fuck, especially if you're sanding it, or I could use ABS resin, which is still toxic as fuck, but nowhere near as bad. And as long as you have a respirator on, you should be fine. Right, respirator. God damn it, dude. Seriously, wear your mask when you're going to work with that shit. I got to okay. get a new one. Hey, chef. I spent three days last week unable to breathe because of my allergies and my asthma. Mm-hmm. You don't want to damage your lungs until you get to the point where I'm at. I just have asthma. But if you do that type of stuff without a mask, your lungs will wind up like mine. And you'll develop you asthma. I want to know what it's like to go days short of breath. If if I'm u- if I'm using the ABS resin and I don't have a respirator, like my last respirator just broke, I have a fan set up blowing past me. 
Please tell me you at least have a nine N95 mask on. Yeah. The last time the last time I used ABS resin, I did. Alright, good. Another, yeah. Alrighty then, everybody. I do hate to say it, but this is where we've got to be ending today's stream. I really do appreciate all of you for nice. being here, for hanging out, and for being awesome. But we got to – you all here on Twitch, stay right where you are because we're going to send a raid off to somebody. You all here on TikTok, we are uh, – well, bye. Or not. Why are you being a butthead? Why are you breaking stuff? I don't know. Stop breaking stuff. I didn't mean to. All righty then. We... Did you let Chef touch it? N no. <laughs> we are going... Can I touch it? To... Oh, my. <laughs> we are going to be raiding... You know what? She's live. So we're going to be raiding Bendy Jenga. Is she still... Ooh. Yeah, she is. She's yeah. still live. She's still going. I'm not raiding into an, a bro an uh, uh, ending stream. Again. Again. Alrighty then, everybody. Please do show. So I know. Please do show Bendy the same amount of love that y'all have shown us. We really do appreciate y'all. And of course, please do remember to check out on YouTube as I am starting to post episodes of Bunch of Goofs on YouTube and working on getting <sighs> DN Doofs ready for YouTube and Spotify. Either way, thank you all so much. And I'll see everybody again for tomorrow's Toss Up Tuesday where we roll this big bitch to see what we play. See you all later. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Bye, you guys. Everybody, that's the end of today's episode of Bunch of Goofs. I hope you enjoyed, and of course, let's say thank you to our cast, Asian Fasha Gamer, Odacia, and Hey, I'm Chef. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>